All right, welcome to the first calculus video. Um, we're just going to start off talking about what functions are. And so basically what a function is, is just, it's a rule that you apply to a set of numbers. Um, here, let's just draw a big blob here with a certain set of numbers in there. It's full of numbers. And what we do is we take our function, which looks like this. You can write it as an f. And this function acts as a rule that we apply to every, every um, value in the domain, which is this blob. Let's label this. Domain is the first set of numbers. We apply the function to it, and then we get out um, we get out this other blob of numbers. They look a little bit different, and this is what we call the range. Is this set of numbers that we get? That doesn't look very good. The set of numbers that we get that uh, result from applying the function to all of the numbers in the domain. Some notation that you might have seen before, or not, um, is uh, to represent any number in the domain, you can just use an x. And when you apply the function to it, the resulting number you get will be f of x, like that. So this f of x this isn't the function. This is actually just the corresponding value in the range that uh, corresponds to that x value that you chose. So say if you picked, um, say if you had a number here like 2, uh, if 2 was in your domain, and you applied a function to it, uh, the resulting value you would get would be f of 2. Another way you can think about this is if you think of your function as a machine. So let's kind of draw a little machine type thing here. Um, and this is f. All right, this is our function. And you, take all your, you start taking all your values from the domain, which are all the values for x, and you put x into the function, and it bounces around, and f works on it, and then it spits out this other value f of x. So if we put in, say, if we threw a 2 into our machine, whatever the function is would work on it, and it would spit out an f of 2. So for every x value we put in, uh, we'll put it into the machine, and the function will work on it and multiply that x value by 2, and it'll spit out the f of x value. So let's just start throwing in some numbers and see what we get. Um, let's, let's pick a couple here. Let's pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 and 2. Okay, so if we throw in negative 2, it's going to bounce around here, and we'll multiply 2 times negative 2, because that's our x value. And it will spit out, it'll come out over here, and we will get negative 4. We throw in negative 1, multiply that by 2, it'll come out as negative 2. If we throw in a 0, multiply 2 times 0, and we'll still get 0. We throw in a 1, we get 1 times 2, and out comes a 2. And if we throw in our positive 2, we get 2 times 2, and it bounces out as a positive 4. Let's draw a little table here. We'll put all of our x values on this side, which are, so far, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we'll put all of our f of x values on this side. So the f of x values that corresponded with these was, um, or were, I guess, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. Now if we want to graph this, um, what we can do is, we could say, we could call this an ordered pair. We could say, well, we'd have x and f of x. And then we could graph this on some paper that has f of x there. But the easier thing to do is just to say that um, y is equal to f of x. So then we can just plot all of these as y values. So then we would get the ordered pair of x, y, which makes graphing it very convenient. So let's graph it. Let's see what we get. We have the point 0, 0. Let's start there. That's an easy point to find. Then we have the point 1, 2. And we have the point 2, 4, which is right there. And then going the other way, we have negative 1, negative 2, and negative 2, negative 4. And you can see quite clearly that um, this in fact does form just a line. So now what we know about this line is it's going to go, it's just going to keep going that way, so it's going to keep going that way, so it's going to cover every possible x value in both directions, and it's going to cover every possible y value in both directions. So for this function um, we would say that it has a, its domain is all of the real numbers, 
we could say that. For the blue one, we could say, well, the domain is equal to... And likewise, it covers all of the real numbers on the y-axis, so it's its range is also equal to all of the real numbers. So let's do another example. Let's, um, let's draw our little machine here. There we go. Um, and let's say that our function is f of x squared. All right. And so we have our domain over here. I'm going to throw all those values in. And out is going to come all of our, our range, our f of x values over here like that. So start. let's pick the same numbers and throw, put them in our domain and see what happens, see what comes out as the range. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Um, so when we put in negative 2 into here, negative 2 times negative 2, we get a positive 4. Um, when we put in negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. If we throw in 0, we get 0 out again, because 0 times itself doesn't change. Uh, if we throw in 1, 1 squared is equal to 1 as well. And if we throw in a 2, 2 squared is equal to positive 4. Um, so let's, let's draw this out. We have, again, the point 0, 0 right there. We have negative 1 and 1. We have positive 1 and 1. And we have negative 2 and 4 it's, uh, right there. And we have positive 2 and 4 right there. And uh, actually, if you just threw in, say, negative 3 and 3, you would find that they're both equal to 9. And so the graph, what we get is we get a parabola that shoots up like that. So for this function, for its domain, um, its domain, its domain is the set of all real numbers. And that's because we can define this function at any x value. If we picked x way out here, there's going to be some y value, but it's just going to be way, 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 way up there. Um, but for its its range here, let's just write that. Oops, its range. Um, its range is not all of the real numbers because if you see, like, there's no there's no positive or negative number that we could ever square on the x-axis to get um, to get a negative number on the y-axis, like. Any number we put in from our domain is always going to be positive when it's squared. So what we have to say is that our range, because we know it, it can be 0, though, because 0 times 0 squared is it's just 0. Um, so we would say that its range is y such that y is um, greater than or equal to 0. And that's it. That describes every every value in our range that we could get because we can get any amount. This will go all the way up to infinity. Or another way we could write this, we could write it as an interval uh, by saying it's the interval 0 to infinity, like that.